Namaste, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, one more enlightening session of um, Chakra Healing series. If we are ready to heal our throat chakra today, we should open the cameras because throat chakra is all about communication and learning or expressing ourselves. So if we have shyness, opening the cameras, the throat chakra will not be healed. So I need more cameras on, welcome. Who else is ready to open their or heal the throat chakra today? Cool, okay. Anyone else? Just five people? All right, so I believe as we start working on it, everyone, rest of the participants will probably get more courage to express themselves and open their cameras. So let's uh, talk about, let's understand what this chakra is. This is the fifth chakra in this series and the location of this energy disk in our body is in the middle of the throat where the thyroid gland is there. So in the female body, the notch in the throat is not that much visible, but in the male body, it, it's called Adam's apple, the, the pointing um, thing in the throat. This chakra is situated right below it. And uh, the, of course, I just mentioned the hormonal gland associated with this chakra is thyroid gland. So what is this throat chakra? The Sanskrit name is Vishuddha, which literally translates purification or purifying. So purification, pure, coming to the truth. The truth is always one constant pure element or thing in this universe is the truth. Nothing else is as pure as truth, right? So again, the thyroid gland here, the hormone secreted by this gland is uh, thyroxin. And the function of this hormone is to maintain the communication between each cells in the body. So, which means to regulate the functions of the cells. The cellular functions are regulated by this hormone and uh, this gland. So anything not balanced, if this gland's function is compromised, then uh, the func uh, cellular functions are compromised means there is no communication in between them. So there's a temperature issue, uh, digestive issues, immune uh, system is compromised. So these are the few, um, like in general, but relating to each thing, the temperature, the digestion and the immune, there are so many other uh, physical issues can arise if the uh, gland is not functioning properly. So uh, next thing is the element. Element of this chakra is space. Excuse me. The, so the space, or in Sanskrit, it is called Akash. So Akash in Sanskrit means uh, 
we usually translate it to the sky, which we can see. So that's why the uh, color of this chakra is a sky blue, but the space is more than the Akash element is more than just the visible sky. It's beyond that, like in between the planets, there is nothing, it's a void of matter. That space is the space element of this chakra. And also sound could be the element of this chakra. So in the bodily um, aspect, by asana, we can create space. Uh, we can all see that uh, the lifestyle we live, the demand of our tasks we do during the day, uh, our body is constantly crunched and the space, the natural space, anatomical space, which, which we were given by birth is gradually uh, decreasing or sometimes it's completely lost. For example, the space between each vertebrae of the spinal cord over the time as we age, they compress and the space between each disc is lost. That is very uh, common and easily comprehensible example, but the, each and every organ and the muscles um, has this natural space in between them. And over the time, we lose it. So practicing certain asanas, we realign the things and create the space which is required. Emotional body, that was physical body, on the emotional aspect, when the energy in this chakra is in, um, fully blown, the person is able is, to express fully. They are resonating, they have full voice, they have uh, no limitation expressing their truth. They're very creative. And when it's in deficiency, uh, they feel shy, they don't have proper words to express themselves. They, um, their voice is very faint, things like that. And when it's an excessive, um, naturally one can guess that they must be very talkative. And uh, we, we have experience in our lives that um, some people uh, are very talkative. They don't have any thread connecting in between them, their talks nothing makes sense, they cannot, the person who has this quality in balance, they are good listener versus in access, they don't want to listen. They will interrupt other people. They just want to talk, talk, talk and excessive energy drain out. So that will also lead to the fatigue. So this is just the basic uh, introduction what this um, chakra is and what is the effects of the throat chakra the vishuddha chakra on our physical and emotional body doing the mantra the seed sound of this chakra is h u m hum and the color is blue. We can see here, the, this chakra is uh, uh, demonstrated as a triangle facing down, means the energy, the, all the chakras has to, when, when we come to this chakra, all the chakras are related to each other. So, and they should be in connection. So we've, uh, we started our journey from the base of the spine and we, we are journeying upward. So right now we just see the posture. Are we sitting erect? Are we aligning the, all the chakra, all the uh, discs in, in our spinal cord? Or we are just crunched and they are all in uh, uneven alignment. So just, that's a checkpoint. So while we, do, uh, while we do the work for this chakra, 
constantly our spine has to be erect or whichever way we have we we are going to create space in our body the spine should be flexible to do whatever we want to do so let's begin uh, the physical asana first we will activate the throat chakra we will whichever position chair or mat doesn't matter just sit erect we feel we must feel grounded either by feet on the floor or glutes sitting tight on the mat first two fingers just put here in the notch of the throat very softly close eyes and deep inhale in and out take the fingers out we just created connection between ourselves the thinking self that we are the soul or spirit residing in the body we just got connected with this body through the breath and we will continue this connection there are two mudras of this uh, chakra we know that each finger has uh, an element associated with it the tallest finger out of five is with the space element and the thumb is a fire igniting the space element so we lightly touch the tips of the thumb and the big finger the middle finger turn the palm up towards the space the sky and just lightly touch uh, rest them on the thighs again sit erect we will chant the seed sound of this chakra is h u m hum we will speak it out loud so this is all about speaking our truth so whatever affirmation we do later in the meditation right now we will sit uh, as, as speak the seed sound hum loudly it should be visible to uh, audible to us and the others so the e, the throat is the active organ of this uh, uh, chakra and the ears are the cognitive because the voice has to be heard so first we have to learn to to be heard to our own self if when we develop that capacity we know what communication we make with ourselves and others and then we can improvise on that so again we will do one more kriya chanting the sound the seed sound of this chakra hum deep inhale in hum Um 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 
Slowly open eyes. Okay, let's begin the moment on the mat. So we will begin seated. Feel free to sit on the chair. It's completely fine if that is okay to you. First, we will try to create, that's the very basic of uh, the prana and life, to create the space between each uh, rib cage, uh, re ribs of the rib cage. There are muscles, they are very shrunk because of the posture. So let's create the space there first. And then we will move to the neck. So inhale, raise the left hand up, exhale, side bend, complete side bend. And inhale, back to center, exhale, release. Inhale, exhale, side bend. Come back to, this time we're gonna stay here for three to five breaths. Just stay, make sure that the band is completely sideways. Breathe deep in and out. Two more breaths. Breathe in the side body. And slow inhale, come back to center and exhale, release. Other side, inhale. Exhale. Side bend to the other side. Keep breathing deep into the side body, the open side. And exhale, pressing belly in. Low inhale, coming back to the center and exhale, release. Very good. Next, we will work on the neck. So first, find a neutral position of the neck where there is no stretch in the front or back. Deep inhale in. And exhale, side bend to the left. Just try to Bring the left ear closer to the left shoulder. We can gently guide the neck with very gentle pressure. Right hand can go behind in the back. Reach to the other side. Slow, steady breaths in and out. Release the top hand down and slowly with the inhalation, bring head back to center. Be very, very gentle. Inhale one more time. And exhale, side bend to the other side. Taking left hand in the back, crossing all the way to the other side. And with a gentle pressure, Keep breathing. Remember, breathe is a food for muscle, oxygen.
And slowly release the hand down and bring neck back to center. Inhale one more time. This time, keeping shoulders relaxed, exhale, bring chin towards the chest. Stay here and keep breathing. Try to expand the rib cage in all direction. With the inhalation, slowly bring head back to the center. Open palms open fingers and gently cross both palms at the neck level, the throat chakra. Hold the neck. This time we are going to like expanding the wings. The thyroid gland has a shape of butterfly. So this action will resemble like expanding the wings of a butterfly. So with the inhalation, we're going to take the chin up towards the space and open the wings. So like opening the wings, we feel the freedom to express ourselves. At this point, we can also take an affirmation, whatever is lacking in, in the matter of communication at its individual. So we can take the affirmation and do these next four or five breaths. Inhale. Beautiful. Release the hands. We can even make that Akash Mudra, Akshay Mudra. Touch the middle finger and thumb. Just feel the vibrations we have. The feel the vibrations of our being at this moment. Do I feel liberated? accelerated at this point or I just feel a little bit open or I still feel blocked. Just take a mental note. Relax. Let's create more space in the spine, decompress the spine. We come into the tabletop position. Tabletop is the back is completely flat like a coffee table. Shoulders, elbow wrist stacked in one straight line and hip and knees are stacked. Neck is completely neutral. With the palms, they more on the balls of the fingers, not on the base of the palm. Inhale, prepare. With the exhalation, we release each vertebrae from the base of the spine up towards the head as if
Someone is running the finger from bottom up towards the head. Now extend into cow pose. Continue flowing with a rhythmic breath. Inhalation, just come back to the coffee table top position. Make the muscle memory of this, uh, in particular, the hip and the knees alignment we have at this point. So we don't want to lose this stacking of knees and uh, hips. Gently walk both hands further out towards the front. We can do this as per the convenience or if the more uh, bent over is not possible, we can always use the props. As I mentioned in a previous class as well, we can use a rolled blanket or a bolster in the front here and Just further fold from hip crest, further down. Try to keep chin as much possible closer to the mat. I will keep both arms straight as much as possible. We are decompressing the lower spine on the physical, in the physical body. Actually the whole spine. And in the yoga philosophy, they say that how much flexibility one has in the spine defines the age of the person, which simply means if you're more flexible, it brings the longevity. Keep breathing. With the inhalation, slowly walk hands back towards the body. We are trying to come back into the tabletop. One more time. Deep inhale in. This time, take hips close to heels, going into child's pose. So we're not trying to bring the forehead on the mat. We're not uh, looking for the grounding here. Just keep the chin hovered over the mat. Try to reach further out towards the front of the mat with fingertips. With deep inhalation, expand the back of the lungs and sides of the lungs. Creating space. Expanding the muscles 
and the space between each ribs. For the next inhalation, slowly come up into tabletop one more time, or maybe right there where the hands are, pressing into the palms. We tuck the toes and send the hips up towards the sky. And we gently pedal heels, bending other knee. Creating space in the back of the legs. Keep paddling. And now we stretch both heels at the same time. Deep inhale in and with the exhalation, try to bring chest close to the thighs as much as possible. Next inhalation, slowly shift body towards the front, looking in between the palms, either walk or lunge forward in the front of the mat. Knee soft and we circle sweep slowly one vertebrae at a time, come to mountain pose. Stay in mountain pose. You're gonna work in this pose, trying to reach into the space beyond the sky. Both Feet are grounded well on all four corners of the he uh, soles of the feet. Mentally note that with the, each inhalation, are we able to grow taller and taller with the fingertips reaching higher and higher. And then circle sweep, bring both hands down by the side of the hips. Beautiful. Let's roll the shoulders. If there is any stiffness or any toxins gathered in the shoulders by this time, just release them. The next, what in the usual yoga practice, the poses we do are the warrior poses. So let's um, learn this, how to create space in warrior two, the Veer Bhadrasana Eka. So create a wide leg spans, as much wide as possible. Turn the toe, uh, left foot toes out to the left side. Both hands stretched out uh, to the side, palms facing down. Let us just feel or be grounded and the body gets settled into the just this pose first. Mentally note, where do I feel the blockage? Standing just like this. 
Where do I feel tightness? So just to mention, check in your device, in your video, I, is my body like this at this point? If I am like this, tilting to the side, my lower back on that side is crunching and losing the space. If I am like this, it's the opposite. So bring the body, upper body, gently into the center. And the next, slowly bend left knee, proper alignment, proper space between the knee and the heel. Knee should be exactly on top of the heel. If we draw a line from this heel to the back, it should be reaching into the center of the back foot. That is a proper alignment. And when we are standing like that, it will create space. So bend the left knee. And now gently turn neck towards left hand fingers. This is the checkpoint time, whether the bo upper body is tilting to any which way. It has to be completely in the center. We can check if the upper body is centerized or not by gently straightening that left leg and see if our body shifts any which way, it tells that the body was not centerized. And I'm just bending my knee again. I think I was centerized. Now we, we will learn to create the space in the inner thigh muscle and in the lower back. So the lower back has to be just there that we just uh, situated at that point. Make sure the body is not tilting to the left hand side. Just turn the neck and deep inhale in and exhale out. As we stand here and keep our breaths on slowly and steadily, the inner thigh muscles will create a space. And that's where the stress gets accumulated in the upper portion of the thighs. If we create the space there, the stress gets released. One more breath. Beautiful. Slowly straighten that left knee. Bring hands to the side of the thighs and turn both foot toes to the front. Standing in this wide leg stance, deep inhale in, making the front torso larger. Inhale. And exhale, hinging from the hip crease, straight back, fold forward. Feel free to use the blocks. Right in the center, under each hand. Deep breath in and out. And as we create the space in that lower spine, this is a decompression of the very, very end of the spine. So keep the spine, whole spine as straight as possible and just keep folding from hip crease.
slowly soften the knees. Circle sweep to prevent injuries or extra stretch, stress in the lower back. We always circle sweep, fold up, fold down and rise up. And exhale, hands at heart, beautiful. Let's do this. Or maybe we can release this stance. Take a circle around the mat. I know some of you may have got tired standing in the wide stance for so long. Coming back to the mat again. Explore, creating space in warrior two pose on the other side now. So just come into wide stance one more time and turn right foot toes out to the right side bend first let us centerize the upper body and then turn the toes out upper body should not move as we start bending the right knee, upper body has to stay as it is right now. Slowly bring right knee on top of the right heel. Hands out to the side. And slowly turn head towards the gaze is at right hand side fingers. Deep inhales in and out. So the breath, the guidance of the breath here is like keeping the belly button pulled in to support the lower back and keep that space in the lower back intact. We keep the belly button in, just breathe deep and expand the chest. One more. And slowly straighten that right knee, bring hands down, turn toes in. Slowly close both feet, coming to a good standing pose. Both feet are hip distanced. Circle sweep, inhale, both hands up. And exhale, folding from hip raise. Keeping the knee straight and elbow straight. Fold forward, spine is straight, neck is neutral. Eat, exhale, try to reach further down with the fingers. Bend knees and slowly come on the mat in prone position. Belly down. We will do sphinx pose. So uh, if um, for any reason, there is discomfort in the lower back. Feel free to separate both legs. If it is okay, then keep them uh, hip distanced apart. Bring both elbows close to the body and keep the upper body, uh, chest and shoulders standing tall. 
The gaze is straight ahead. Glutes are relaxed. Breathe into the chest area. Pressing into the palms, tuck toes, and pull ourselves back into child pose for a few breaths. Coming into the kneeling position. We will do, we all can do this camel pose. So there is no pose that no one can do because thankfully in yoga world also, there are so many inventions and props are created and the intellectual and imaginations are there. So it's not like that this pose is difficult. I cannot do, Every, everyone can do all the poses. So first, the basic camel pose is knees exactly under the hips, straight upper body, both hands, make a fist of both hands and plant both feet in the center of the lower spine. Support there with Form pressure, open the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades. And from here, we can grow more into the camel pose. So with the inhalation, expand the chest, making the front torso bigger and bigger. Exhale, stay, inhale, expand. Again, as we measured the hip and knee alignment in the first tabletop and the anahata pose we did in the warrior two also, we were not losing the alignment of the upper body. Same thing right now also, we are not losing what the, the hip and knee alignment is. So be very, very watchful that with the leaning back, we should not lean from the knee joint. It is the curve is all coming from the lower back. So the hip and knee alignment stays same. Inhale and expand. Exhale, stay. And when it comes to the maximum point, we can just stay there and keep breathing. Try not to extend the neck too much so that the swallowing is difficult. If the swallowing is difficult, that means that we have extended neck too far. And from here, if we want to go further using the blocks, keep both blocks on the highest height on the side of the feet or wherever we can reach comfortably. Again, bring, bringing the hip alignment, inhale and exhale. Inhale and expand, exhale, stay. Slowly, one vertebrae at a time, coming back to the kneeling position where we started. And 
with the exhalation coming down into child's pose. One more time. Mentally send love to the portion we just created space. The very end of the spine. I respect this space. And this space is very, very important for physical health as there is a nerve plexus situated there. If we lose this space, we have many nerve problems in the legs and around that area. Slowly rise up. And the next very, very funny pose that we are going to do today. But I am pretty sure that after we, whoever is there to do this pose will really have amazing experience. So, this is called lion's pose. For that, we come into uh, sitting, um, kneeling seated pose. Expand both knees. Both palms, fingers pointing towards the back, like the paws of the lion. Lift off, hips, tuck toes. Toes are tucked. Taking both palms in between the thighs. Sticking out the head. What we are doing here is deep inhaling and then while exhaling, our eyes will roll up, tongue will stick out, and we will create a ha sound, or we can actually roar like a lion. So whichever is the possibility today. Gently close eyes, toes flat, relax, and feel what it feels at this moment. I'm sure it was pretty um, releasing. So next we are gonna do the meditation, seated meditation and with the affirmation. We will do the pranayama first. There is another mudra that we can do is interlace all the fingers and touch the pads of the thumbs. Rest the mudra in the center of the body, straight spine. We will take an affirmation. It is individual. Feel free to work on whichever the weaknesses we have. Or in general, we can say that I'm able to express the truth. I can live my truth. And I'm completely comfortable 
with my truth, my mind and body are tuned We will do the bees breath with a different technology today. So you can just create a sound uh, in the beginning while exhaling, but it, after one or two breaths, start creating sound while inhaling also. This can take a little longer to produce the smooth sound because Again, the, we are working on the healing of throat chakra. So if it is compromised, uh, the sound will not be uh, rhythmic or maybe very, very rough in the beginning. But as we learn and practice this, this particular pranayama every day, it will improve not just the pranayama technique, but the effects the throat of the throat chakra we have the, on the emotional body that will also go on the higher scale on the improvisement. So deep inhaling. Mm. Relax. And it's the time again to take mental notes. How the energy in my throat chakra was in the beginning of the class. How the physical body was feeling before the class. and how it feels at this point, this moment. Do I feel released? Relaxed body and mentally unstressed, relieved. To end our beautiful practice today, we will chant the Om, the universal sound, three times with the awareness of the sound has three letters A, U, M, M. In the A, it comes from the deep in the belly. O comes in the front of the throat from the front of the throat and the um sound comes from deep from the back of the throat. So 
keeping awareness like this will generate the energy here. Sitting with a straight spine, the whole face is relaxed. Both teeth are separated and the tongue is gently attached. The tip of the tongue gently attached and the back of the lower teeth. How was the feel? Is anyone up for sharing? You can unmute yourselves. Yeah, it was a wonderful class. Lord, be our life belong to me. Okay, how was I need to say? Speak in English, please. You want to say Pranti Bhai? Yeah. I was, I was going to tell you that uh, for a while when I had this lower back pain and sciatica pain, I was uh, you know, sometimes not doing the yoga, not attending the class, because I thought it would increase my pain. But after doing it for a while, I found out that actually it really helps. You know, and I increase the stamina also, I can hold the position for a little longer than before. And uh, so the, making the body flexible through this yoga really helps. Doesn't add Beautiful. to the fatigue, but reduces the fatigue. Very true, very true. And it is my own experience also. It's, it's my own experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you sister. Know? Yes. Wonderful class. We feel like we have so much more space in the body. And you have to throat bhi shoot kar diya or life bhi long. Kar diya. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else would like yes, to share? Yes, sister. Yeah. It, so it was a wonderful experience, sister. I'm feeling so light and calm and just uh, like uh, just as if there is nothing around me. I'm just yes. feeling very light, like in the uh, in the Akash. <laughs> yes, yeah. see, that's uh, how you relate it. That when we have enough space, there is uh, actually the space is is a void of matter. But creating space in the physical body, we become lighter because there is no compression, no tightness, and we feel very light. Your hundred percent. Whatever you feel is very true. Thank you for sharing. That's amazing. Yeah, thank Anyone you, sister. 
All right. So uh, next week we will work on the sixth chakra. We 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 are together for five weeks now. It's like we are creating a bond on this series. So the next week we will work on the uh, Agya chakra. It's situated here in the center of the forehead. Uh, so uh, was, uh, it's also called the eye of wisdom. I'm very curious what it will bring to us. So see you next week. And for the rest of the week, keep working on the chakra number five that we worked on today. This is very, very important to be open to the truth we have and to be able to share it. If we are shy, we, the energy we have, it's compressed inside and it will hinder the growth. Both physical body, as uh, the brother mentioned, he, compression of the lower vertebrae, that is the hindering of the cells of the body that will uh, lead to more problems than our problems. And uh, similarly, creating space in the mental, emotional body will help us grow in that perspective. So thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you, sister. Om Shanti. Are these videos Om going Shanti. to be on the site? Huh? This videos? Yes. It will be shared eventually under process. Okay. Thank you. And, and sister, Thank what's you. the color of Gyan Chakra? The color it, of Gyan Chakra? It's the deep blue. Deep blue. Okay. Indigo. Indigo. Okay. Thank you, sister.